Hello, Uranium friends. We are back with episode 19 of Uranium Talk, talking all things uranium. I am Jungle Funk from the Chart Guys, joined here by Chris Red Devil. Chris, it's been a tough time in the uranium space lately, huh? You're kidding, bro. Yeah, the bears are out. Charts are starting to break down, and that just is what it is. There's no real uh, positive way to spin it, and one thing that we'll always do with you guys here is keep it real. Um, yeah, uh, and it didn't help that UEC got banged out with a short report this week either, did it? Yeah, no, certainly not, um, and we'll we'll look at that chart. It was uh, exceptional downside on that short report. Sometimes you see them, the, the short reports come out, and it's just one flush down, and that's the bottom. Um, and we, we obviously did get a good bounce underway Friday, but solid percentage move down and break out of its range. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and, and get right into some of these charts. And we will start off here with the broad market, looking at the S&P 500 futures. And right now on the daily, we've got a daily uptrend to be watching. So bulls want this low of Friday to be a fresh daily higher low. And if that gets taken out, we'll have to be cautious of the potential head and shoulders that we were talking about last week. And if that were to confirm, that would bring a lot of continued bear pressure onto the uranium space. So that just is what it is. S&P 500 bulls want to see another leg up to be confident that they can at least stay range bound on the weekly. And as always, we got to be watching volume. If the next time we see weekly consolidation, we have increasing bear volume, then uh, regardless of how high we bounce here, we'll have to kind of recalculate probabilities because if you have increasing bear volume on the way towards support, that increases the odds that that support would break. So a few steps ahead here at this point, and we'll just be watching our daily uptrend for now. And we know bigger, bigger picture that 38, 39, 25, this low of two weeks ago is the key support there. So looking around at some other non-uranium but important things, we've got XLE on the monthly potentially losing its monthly 12 EMA. And we know the uranium space correlates with the energy sector and if this EMA is lost, then that would be another bearish uh, headwind for any uranium bulls out there. So we've got six days left on the monthly candle, and we'll see if bulls can wick it back up. But just feeling as much pressure as it has um, up to this point is already a mark against the uranium sector. And probably the biggest issue in the uranium space right now, or biggest reason for concern, is this URA spy ratio chart that we've been talking about every week since we started this show. It's breaking bear. And we obviously all wanted it to break to the upside because that was the, the recipe for the bull bonanza. But it's breaking bear, and that just is what it is. So we've lost our first level, and now we're coming down to the low of August. And if that breaks, that'll be the second level of the EQ being taken out. And we know for bears to have full confidence, they want to bust out all of these levels. So that just is what it is. We got a nice daily downtrend here to be watching. And if we were to see a scenario where only one of the levels in the EQ were to break and not the others, we would need to see a daily uptrend confirmed for step one of some shifting momentum there. So looking at U.UN, definitely holding on better than a lot of the miners, basically any miner not named CCG, uh, CCJ, um, U.UN is holding on better. So, But we are right down near this 1424 monthly higher low support. So if that were to be taken out, that would be a monthly downtrend confirmed. And if bulls are going to save monthly support, they're going to need a daily uptrend as step one. So right now, key resistance is 1573. We got daily 12 EMA resistance as well as a visual guide. And can bulls defend this low or not? We'll find out. They still got a good bit above daily support at 1466 right now. So bulls will be hopeful that they can kind of uh, at least have a shot at defending this support. 
So CCJ, the shining star out of our major miners at this point, is still looking for a monthly higher low compared to 2102, and it still has a good bit of space there. So when we get to some of these other miners, you'll see not everybody has got this much room. So if you're looking to play bullish, uh, it behooves you to play one of the stronger names, and right now that is CCJ. So that being said, uh, bulls still have their backs against the wall in the short term as they are right now trying to defend this 2369 support. Current low is 2373, so holding by four pennies and a long way to go to 2555 daily lower high resistance. And basically every name right now is kind of a sit and wait type scenario until we can get some daily uptrends. So there's no reason that you have to step in front of a steamroller and try to nail bottoms on these names. If we get reprieve for bulls in the space, daily uptrends will be confirmed and it'll be a bit more comfortable to be looking bullish. So that being said, there's also bottom fish opportunities. If we look at NXE, we're coming down to this area that has held numerous times. So there are low risk opportunities, but you just gotta make sure that if you're taking these bull plays, essentially just bottom fishing support, you gotta respect your stop because if this breaks bare and see, there, there's not a lot of support below and it, it could spell serious downside for the sector. I mean, there's our structural um, things happening right now in the space. And we'll look at UEC for the best example of that. This is a monthly tightening range, holding monthly EMAs that we've been up and over uh, since December 2020. And we're breaking below now. And that is, there's just no way around it uh, other than saying that it is not a good look. There's structural damage. Bulls are going to need to regain a monthly uptrend eventually to have us confident that a, a bottom is in. But for now, bears are in control. And typically in this sector, we'll see these major miners of CCJ, NXE, UUUU, and UEC. They kind of play follow the leader around the charts. And, and one name will set its monthly higher low and then the others set their monthly higher lows. Um, and in this case, We've got to be cautious that with UEC breaking out of its monthly range, perhaps the others are set to do so. And we know it won't take a lot. When we look at UUUU, we had a we actually have already broken out of our monthly range up here, but we have our equivalent support back from July uh, 2022 is still in play. And we can see on UEC that's been taken out. But NXE still holding that summer low. U, 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 right down on it right now. And like everybody else, gonna need a daily uptrend if that support is to hold and anything less and bears remain in control. And say we do get our daily uptrends, that will just be weekly bounces. And then bears are gonna be looking for weekly lower highs. And if we really want to hold these supports in any notable sense, we're gonna need weekly uptrends. So there's a, a ton of work ahead for bulls to do but low risk opportunities down here if you um, are into that. And essentially with low risk, you have a lower probability of success. That's kind of the trade-off. Lower risk is a lower probability of the trade working out, but it's low risk. So it's not that, um, you know, that's the offset there. Well, could you just expand on that? Because um, maybe someone's confused by that language. That maybe some of the listeners are confused by that. Yeah, so essentially, like a lower risk play means your stop is a lot closer. Um, and with that, with your stop being closer, if you're wrong, you're going to lose less money because your your stop is like if if you were playing from up here, say five eighty six or something like that, your your stop is twenty five per. Oh, that was the wrong pull there. Um, your your stop is. 22% away if you're playing from around six. But if you're playing from here now, your stop is only 5.44% away. So because the proximity to your stop is a lot lower, your stop's very close, it doesn't, it's not going to take a lot for bears to push down below there. So your odds 
are kind of diminished that the stop will hold because if if we were playing from up here, there would still be a lot of hope still that bulls can show up and that distance increases your odds that like over that time bulls will be able to show up and get something done. Well, we can see over the last few weeks, bulls have not done anything. So that decreases those odds simply because they have less room to work with at this point. So it's always the, the trade-off. Lower risk on the trade equals lower probability of success. And um, that so is that. Some, some, some may be looking down at these levels here now. So just pull a measurement there and see what that um so from is. from current prices that's 12.9 percent away right so even though that on the chart it looks like a low risk play you know it's a 12 percent uh drawdown yeah so still... that's, that's why a lot of times we're saying to be kind of in like a wait and see yes is uh, you know i guess this could be a low risk bottom fish off of this level but if it breaks you know a lot of times traders and, and investors and players could sit there and go, well, you know, I'm going to, I'll make it work off this, uh, this, this level over here, but that's still 12%. So, you know, you, uh, then, uh, then, you know, I would have to decide, am I willing to deal with the 12% drawdown? And then am I going to sit there and say, well, then I have this level. So it, it's, it's a tough, it, it's a tough spot to be in. So if you're not really a trader and you don't want to get caught up in all this stuff, then it's kind of like a wait and see. And let's wait to see if we can get some strength back in the sector before diving in on any of this stuff. Yeah, and, and that's certainly where my mind is at. As everybody knows, I've been using the URA spy ratio chart as my top guide in the sector. So with that breaking bear, I've personally got no real interest bull at the moment. And that doesn't mean bulls can't show up and they can't shift things around from here but i'm not going to be an aggressive bull when we're getting red flags all around we're, yeah we're i getting... mean the really the, the right place to be looking is where can you be entering for shorts maybe you know right joe i mean yeah we talked about this a little bit i mean this it's more of an environment for shorting than anything else but then you still have to follow you know the rules with you know levels that you're going to know that you're going to be stopped out on yeah, whether you're playing bull, whether you're playing bear, always got to have stops, always got to have a, a trade thesis, and it's it's a tough environment right now. It's volatile in both directions and can certainly see a reality where bears end up getting their faces ripped off. Bulls have been getting their faces ripped off, so there's there's no such thing in trading as like, a, like an easy trade, really. Um, so always got to have your risk defined, always got to have a thesis behind what you're doing, and we'll see what we got going. Our ETFs, URA is right on key support as well, URNM right on key support. So if these break, there's a lot of air underneath, and we'll have to see what we get. But that, that's pretty much all I've got this week. We're yeah, all, all firmly these... in a wait and see mode. Yeah, all of these charts are kind of, you know, we can just basically, they look exactly the same, right? They're all, they're all on key supports. So, you know, there's no need to, in my opinion, I mean, I'm not trying to be a hero anywhere in any of this stuff. I'm just kind of in a wait, in a wait and see mode for, for absolutely sure. But let's talk about what's strong, you know? So, you know, Silex is in a very strong monthly uptrend so if if you're looking bullish you know like i am i'm in a half position here from wherever i was from i was in the dollar 90 range i think i'm i'm somewhere in this area i i i i, I took a position i sold a partial in here i'm still in a half position but you know if you want to look bullish uh this is one of the spots to be looking bullish right i mean this this there's nothing wrong with this monthly chart at all you yeah, know, you, still you very start, healthy. We don't start to worry about anything on this chart and still two, until 256 breaks down. So if if you're looking bullish, and this is actually, you know, Silex has got a lot of potential fundamentally. So, um, you know, their, their laser enrichment program and, and you know, they're not going to be subject. They're not miners. They're more of an infrastructure play. So 
could be worth it if you if you're looking bullish to look here. I mean, this thing has been we talk about 12 uh, EMA riders on the monthly. This thing has just been riding this 12 EMA since basically since the uh, pandemic lows. It's just been riding it all the way up and there's nothing that says it's not going to right here. It bounced off the 12 EMA, you know, right here, it bounced off the 12 EMA, all these bounces. So if you want to look bullish and you're looking for a bullish chart, well, this is one of them, you know? Yep. So um, again, you know, we don't address it much, but here's cause Adam problem, you know, it's, it's within its range. Um, you know, they've got a lot of geopolitical headwind headwinds and, you know, they're talking about some production cuts and whatnot, but you know, this chart doesn't look as bad. And as we have said with CCJ that Joe has covered, doesn't look as bad as a lot of the other ones. U.UN doesn't look as bad. It just, you know, 1424 for us now is a key level uh, to see how it responds there. But again, it's just not bad. So, you know, we'll go back to UEC for a moment. And uh, we're going to link in the short report, but there's, you know, Kensington Financial or something. We'll link it in for you. But they, you know, they nailed this thing with a short. So uh, this is a kind of a key support area. If we look at, let me just pull the monthly up here. Right. So we're kind of in a key support area. So, you know, a, a, a low risk uh, bottom fish here on support. But, you know, if that support breaks, it's it's just it's not worth it to be in. So, like, you know, there's plenty of people that just aren't quick enough to be able to make these trades. So just don't do it. Let's sit on our hands. And what we really want to just see is, I mean, this is what I'm waiting for. I don't need to be a hero. I'm waiting for this daily level to go like this, probably pull back, hopefully above this 234 to get that level to work off of. And then hopefully it makes it, it starts making a trend change. That's what we're looking for in the majority of the space. Nothing's going to change until then. Uh, none of the charts look good except for the ones that we just highlighted. So it's patience, you know, long-term uh, investors and players are just being patient. Um, those people who are watching the space that haven't gotten in, they're being patient. Let's look, let's wait to see that there's some strength in the sector uh, in the, and in the broad markets in general before we even decide to, to dive in. Couldn't agree more. Patience will be key. Don't have to nail the bottoms on these things. I, I mean, if the bull thesis plays out, there will be plenty of meat left on the bone. So when things are uncertain and like looking bad, there, there's no reason to just yahoo into that. We can wait for some strength. We can wait to have some levels to play off of and then see if bulls can regroup and, and get things going. But we can't deny that UEC has major major structural damage at this point, and UUUU and NXE are on the verge of it. And then if those break down, the odds will decrease that CCJ will be able to hold. So we've just got to be patient, wait for some daily trend changes, and that's just pretty much that. That's all I've got yeah, this and, week. And as far as far as the thesis is concerned, uh, there's nothing that's really changed. Everything that says is pointing to that the thesis is still confirming, you know, we're still having some major production issues and supply issues. And, you know, yes, the, the, the space is opaque. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there has something to say about um, that the thesis has changed, you know, just let us know. But, you know, if you know that the fundamentals are still good in the space, uh, these these are the times to really be researching the companies that you think have a shot at doing well. You know, um, Fission 3.0, you know, they made a, a major discovery and it went parabolic. So those things can happen. And some good financial due diligence, you get ahead of the herd with the, with the, the technical chart readers on stuff like that, um, if you have confidence in it. So... You know, if the, if something has changed in the thesis, let us know. But as far as I'm concerned, the thesis is still good. It's just that these charts, the price action, especially in the miners, is just not cooperating. But it's it's a broad market thing, you know. There's nothing that's really cooperating anywhere. Maybe the precious metals are, are starting to make a turn. But other than that, you know, energy is on its way down. It's, you know, it is, everything points to the fact that the cycle top has been hit there. So... And uranium, regardless of the thesis, is going to 
get pulled down with energy. It's a, it's an energy name. And this is kind of a good point to the uh, value of having technical analysis in your game is like you can be right on the thesis and the thesis can eventually play out. But if the charts are going down, then you're not making money. So that's why TA is a great tool for trading and maneuvering and managing positions because the thesis is still fine, but the charts are going down. And that's the nature of the, the markets. Fundamentals tell you where to be, and technicals tell you when to be there. And right now, technicals are telling us that it's maybe not the place to be at the moment. So time will tell, and the trends will be the guide. Right now, we're watching daily downtrends across the board. If we get some daily uptrends, then we can start to reevaluate some things, but ultimately going to need weekly uptrends to really see any sustainable reprieve. Sounds good, Joe. Over and out. Over and out. Hope everyone's hanging in there. If you got any questions, if you want to rant, if you need some support, drop it in the comments. And we will see you all next week. Take it easy. See ya.